bionic dragons that fire rockets from its back. Demigods from the night that can coat the land in a permafrost. These are just some of the magnificent creatures in Pow World, the game that has taken the internet by storm. It's Pokemon with guns. But when people say that, they conveniently forget that Digimon exists. Don't worry, Digimon, you're still near and dear to my heart. The Palagos Islands will be my home for the next 100 days, and watch as I go from a complete noob to an absolute Pow World legend. If this sounds like the video for you, then join me to the end. Before any hero's journey can begin, they must be forged in the fires of destiny. Did I craft a character that was unique to my preferences? Did I create a character that was so unique that he would carve out his own story in these new unexplored lands? No! I created a generic anime girl. Welcome to Power World. I gave her heart-shaped eyes because I have a brain parasite that compelled me to do so. And because I'm a mature adult, I played around with the voice slider before settling on my character. I woke on a beach surrounded by little critters called pals. Are they Pokemon? No! I encountered this lady who hates pals because they ate her friends alive or something? She did give me wood, however, in-game. With that handful of wood, I crafted myself some basic tools, such as a club and a pickaxe, and I began harvesting the resources in the area. With those resources, I crafted my first pal balls. I understand why the woman on the hill was so afraid. If I saw this thing coming at me with a wild look in its eye, I'd fear for my life too. I used my cudgel to give this precarious poultry a bonk and used a pal ball to capture it. After capturing that chicky pie, chicky pee? I'm just gonna call it a chicky pie. I had an idea. Can I capture a human? I had to know. So I returned to the angry woman on the hill and bonked her over the head. So in response, she filled me full of lead. When I went to get my stuff back, I threw down my freshly caught chicky pie by accident. I thought it was kind of funny. I give this woman one last scare before I rolled off into the sunset. It was time to settle down on somewhere more permanent. And I picked this place between my initial spawn point because it had a fast travel node next to it, and I would be using it quite liberally later on. I crafted a PAL box, and what this is, it's basically like a PC terminal in Pokemon. Look, I swear I'm trying not to make too many Pokemon comparisons, okay? Work with me. What this did is it allowed me to make my home more permanent and allowed me to control my PALs around the base. And it also acted as a PAL storage. As I was building my base, I saw this mighty Memorist, and I knew I had to tame it. But for now, I was still too weak. As night fell on day one, I finished up building my starter home when I noticed this dude just walking around. I honestly thought he was a player at first, so I had to investigate. Yeah, turns out this man here is a wandering merchant. My stomach began to rumble and I was hungry. I placed down a campfire next to my house and with the eggs I collected from my chicky pies, I made some breakfast. I also made some grilled chicky pie. Don't worry, they aren't for mine. While taming some yesterday, I had a few accidents. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. After eating a filling meal, I began to build a ranch for my chicky pies. Of course, I didn't want my pals to starve, so I also placed down a feeding station and a berry crop plot. I can see why Pal World is so successful now. It takes a person's primal desire to cultivate and makes it a reality. As I was watering my berries, this Dinosaur wanted to watch. I'd end up catching him later, but for now, I was freezing. I needed to keep warm with these torches. Before the sun rose on day three, I saw these mysterious floating pals, and I thought they looked really cool. And since they looked cool, I wanted one. This pal was called Daydream. I found one I liked and began hitting it to make it more compliant. There will be no justice system jokes here. When its health was low enough, I threw a pal ball. I caught the Daydream and did a little happy dance. With my new pal, I approached the sleeping Dinosum, and I hit it over the head. With one attack, he crippled both me and my daydream, so I began running for my life. The Dinosum chased me to the second half of the island, and it eventually lost interest. Now that I was off the hook, I was free to explore at my leisure. I found a treasure chest and another fast travel waypoint. I also found some lore that I didn't read, because reading's hard. I found this dude just chilling by a campfire. When I talk to him, he says that pals make you good. So, cool I guess. The more pals you have, the stronger you become. After talking to the skilled islander, I found a fire egg, and I couldn't hatch it at this very moment. I'd need to craft an egg incubator first. I saw in a promotional video that you can ride these things, and hey, walking wasn't really that much fun. So, I figured I'd try my luck. I hit it with my club and began fighting with it, and that didn't go very well at all. After getting my stuff back, the ek deer that I was trying to tame ran away. But, with luck, I did manage to find a herd of them. Once again, with club in hand, I tried my luck. 
It was at this point that I discovered that you can dodge roll. My elite Dark Souls skills did not save me, and I died again. When I respawned at base, I tended to my berry farm, when all of a sudden, an alarm went off. I was being raided by hungry pals. I had no idea what any of that meant, so I steeled myself for battle. A group of hooded hoodlum lizards called Least Punk started to run up the hill to my base, hoping for a free meal. I was feeling quite charitable, so I fed them some knuckle sandwiches. I don't know why I didn't tame it at the time, I was probably filled with adrenaline. My cheeky pies fought off the other Lee's Punk. Before I knew it, the raid was over, and I could leave to collect my dropped gear. I returned home to capture some lamb balls for the tutorial quest. It wanted me to get five of them, and I got to work. I discovered that if you're too close to a pal, your pal ball will go right through it, which is quite unfortunate. I had some wool laying around from the lamb balls, and I fashioned it into cloth so I could make my first set of clothes. Looking cute as a button, as usual, well done, Glam. There were some land balls across the bridge to my base, and for some reason I hesitated on capturing this one, and my chicky pies finished it off for me. Thanks, I guess. And I placed down a shoddy bed. I've slept behind dumpsters before, and under debris on cardboard. Nothing about this bed looked shoddy. I would sleep on this bed. Now that I had my own bed, my pals needed some beds of their own, and I got to crafting a few. With the tutorial tasks completed for now, I upgraded my pal box, and I could summon more pals from the inventory to help me around the base. After that, I planted more berries, and this chicky pie decided to show me its cool dancing moves. Nice. And while waiting for my lamb balls to shed their wool, I made a tasty lunch for myself. Before long, I had enough wool to convert into cloth to craft myself a parachute. When night fell, I left my base to tame some nocturnal pals, like these hootcrates. I liked them because they were wizard owls, and hey, you know, that's good enough for me. I found a group of them, and I said hello by smacking one over the head with the bat, like a normal person, and we got into a huge fight. The Hootcrates managed to knock out my daydream, but I captured one in return, so it kind of balanced itself out. While fleeing from the remaining Hootcrates, I found a Depresso, and I liked him a lot, so I captured this one as well. When I got back to base, I put Depresso to work, and he was really efficient. He even started to gather resources around the base and began placing them in a storage chest for me. Depresso was a bro. A real pal, if you will. If you place a down pal in the pal box, they will heal in about 9 minutes or so. And since I had time to kill and pal balls to burn, I went out on a pal taming spree. I started off with this cute little fox sparks, a fire fox white on the nose, and I'd chase these cativa around with an axe. With the help of my hootcrates, I engaged this ex gear, and with the skills I've learned after playing Power World for a few hours, became a master of the dodge roll. We got the ex gear, and that was one of my biggest wins. On my way back to base, I saw Nightwing flying lazily above, and I wanted to catch it, but I couldn't quite yet. My travels led me to this small rundown settlement, and I had a small chat with a down-on-his-luck PDIF officer, saying he'll do anything for a buck, and I mean anything. Speaking of doing anything for a buck, I've opened up channel memberships. If you like me and the content that I do, consider becoming a channel member today, with cool perks like private art streams when they happen, early access to upcoming videos, and a viewer poll where you guys can vote on the games you like to see me play and even Discord access when I finally get off my butt and make one. Every dollar spent keeps the lights on and the funny flowing. Consider becoming a channel member today. Alright, shameless blog over. When I got back to base, I found out that you can make a string of the same type of structures, so I placed down a few storage chests, and my ultra pal Depresso started crafting them for me. Honestly, I don't want to tell the other pals, but Depresso is my favorite. I let my fox sparks out of the pal box to stretch its legs, and much to my amusement, it helps you cook food. The more I play this game, the more I realize how in-depth a lot of these game mechanics are. You'll see it for yourself later on in the video, too. A herd of what eating pals? Well, it's a good thing I'm a small anime girl, uh. Alright, team, defend me with your lives. I know I'm the one that enslaved you to do my bidding against your will, but defend me. Defend me and my honor. Defend me they did, because that raid was over before I even knew it. I'll admit, though, not a whole lot happened today. I was stuck at the pal upgrade bench making my daydream a caller. This caller would allow her to synchronize attacks with me in combat. After the caller was crafted, I began constructing a forge to smell ore into ingots. Slowly, I was clawing my way out of the Stone Age. 
One of the coolest things in Power World is that your forges run off of Fire Pals. Fire Pals have the kindling ability and they go around your base lighting torches, cook food for you, and smell your ore and ingots. Stuff like that just tickles me pink. I started Day 7 by crafting myself a feathered hairband. It said it was armor and it protected your head from damage slightly, just like a napkin protects the inside of your house from tornado projectiles. I had enough metal ingots to craft a saddle for my Eth deer, and Depresso gave me a hand, and then he just left me hanging seconds later. Thanks, man. This one task alone took up a good chunk of the day. But I got the saddle crafted, I was now free to explore the island at a decent pace, and run over small pals because it's funny to watch them roll around. More resource gathering was in my future. My pal box wanted a stone pit to be built before I could upgrade my base again, and I am one to deliver what the almighty pal box commands. With the help of my pals, we assembled a rock quarry, and like a duck to water, Depresso re and like a duck to water, Depresso resigned to his fate and began mining. While I was on the ball, I made a lot of arrows. I would use them for an up and coming boss fight a little later, and I needed them to lure the Nightwing out of the sky. I noticed my Depresso was feeling quite depressed oh. So to help remedy the situation, I tried to get him to sleep. Hey, when you're depressed, sleeping for 16 hours a day helps immensely. Trust me, I know from experience. Depresso was quite keen on not taking a nap. Uh, I did what I could. The daylight was burning, and I wanted to go tame a Nightwing. I mounted it up on Ekdir, and ran with expedience to where I saw the Nightwing days prior. I saw the Nightwing, and I readied my bow, and let loose a volley of arrows. The Nightwing was quite formidable, and did a lot of damage to me. My dodges were near perfect, and the symphony of arrows sang throughout the hills. I tried my luck and threw a pal ball at the Nightwing, unbeknownst to me at the time, but I just threw my last pal ball. I had no other choice but to disengage. Up on the hill, I found a pal ball, and as soon as I picked it up, the Nightwing shot me down again. After collecting my stuff, there was another free pal ball on the ground, and a fast travel. I collected them both, and then I was back at it. I was in Gosu mode, and wasn't leaving this valley without that Nightwing. We went back and forth, until success! My first Power World Flyer was obtained. My armor was damaged, but my spirits were high. I decided to run back home on foot to see what I could find. I managed to find a couple more Depressos. I caught one, and Ekdir went down. With my travel slowed, I ran to the nearest fast travel beacon and went back to the safety of my base, triumphant. While I was checking out stuff around the base, I saw this shiny daydream floating around my house. I was actually panicking behind the screen a little bit. I really didn't want to screw this up. I ran inside to craft more pow balls, and when I mentally prepared myself, engaged the shiny daydream. The range on my pals at base were insane, because they started to attack the daydream too. With just a tiny sliver of health left, I clutched out a W and captured her. She was very close to dying. I was shaking. The excitement of my first shiny pal was probably the most rewarding thing that happened to me that day, at least. I ran over to the pal box to swap daydreams. Sorry babe, this one's just shinier. I couldn't really tell the difference between a normal pal and a shiny, but this daydream looked slightly bigger, so that's cool. With my shiny new pal, I was feeling confident and decided to take on this dinosaur that was patrolling the base. I shot at it with an arrow, then it proceeded, without skipping a beat, to one-shot my daydream. My other pals didn't quite like that, and they all jumped the Dinosum, leading to an easy capture. I was going a bit stir-crazy, and decided to leave the base for a while and explore, as well as farm pals for resources. I unlocked another fast travel, and saw this fellow floating along. Me being a naive Power World player, I thought this guy was a mini-boss or something, not realizing that he was just a regular old pal. I threw two pal balls in vain, and as I got closer to him, he shot a poison bolt at my ex deer, and deleted himself. Big rip. As morning rose, I found another fast travel, and decided to head back home. I wanted to fight my first world boss today, so I organized my pals and set out for adventure. Using the fast travel near my base, I traveled to a crumbled castle and caught a tea font, climbed a literal mountain, and met my foe face to face, a chillette a ferret dragon thing that shoots ice. My ek deer charged at it and got stuck on the cliff, causing the chillette to break for a moment. But it was crafty and used the bug to get me to come closer. Clever. Before I could pull out a pal ball, it got nuked and I lost my chance. On my way home, I tried to glide over to the mainland and didn't quite make it. I also found out that you can drown if you run out of energy. I did get my stuff back and ran across a pack of dire howls. They looked cool, so that means I had to tame one, right? Well, that's what I would have done if my pals didn't microwave them in seconds flat. I did manage to catch one. 
but it broke out at 60% capture rate. I don't know how that happens, but it did. After heading home, I placed down the hot springs and I called it a day. For the last week, I've had trouble getting my pals to help me around the base, and I think I found out the reason why. The pals were having trouble getting through the door to my house, and they couldn't access the crafting station. So with that in mind, I crafted a high quality crafting station outside. This structure would allow me to craft advanced armor and tools, like metal axes, picks, and armor, which I upgraded. The pelt armor looked really good, I think. I was very concerned with my depresso's health, so I tried throwing him into the hot springs to relax, and he just kind of floated in air. I don't know why he did this. I know I was lacking beds, but I've never seen a Depresso sleep, so I have no idea what's wrong with him. I just kind of left him alone. When the sun was going down, I left base to catch more nocturnal pals. And do you remember that skilled islander from the other day? Turns out you can kill him for coins. I do this a few times in the playthrough. I don't know why I did this. I probably have some unresolved issues. I ran up on the chillet again, and this time I had the intent to catch it. With the help of Ekdir and Daydream, we got it really low, and I managed to clutch out a catch. When I was leaving to go back home, another Tombat spawned, and I managed to catch that as well. Hey, it was a pretty solid day today. The morning of day 12, I caught another Tombat. I was lucky to find it before it despawned, and it almost got me, but I was too quick for it. It did break out of the pow ball a few times. Back at base, I crafted a medieval medicine bench, and I would never use this in the playthrough. I don't know why but I didn't mess with it too much. I needed to craft my Nightwing a saddle, and I was low on pallium fragments, so I got to work getting some from around the base. I quickly became over encumbered, but luckily, I was still close to base, so the walk back wasn't too horrendous. It gave me a moment to think about my life, and my regrets. Gosh darn it, wouldn't you know, I was low on metal ingots. This would become a problem through this entire 50 days. I would always be behind on my metal production. I have never once looked at a guide or a YouTube video. This is my first time playing Pal World, and I wanted to see what I could accomplish on my own just by playing the game. You know, like the good old days? You may also notice that these days are getting shorter. You are correct. I spent a lot of time farming, and mining metals, and chopping wood. To me that's boring to watch, so I'm not going to focus on it too much. Yeah, I'm gonna be one of those I farmed off camera guys, but you guys are just gonna have to take my word for it. We're working on the honor system here on Channel Glam. I started working on my Nightwing saddle today. It took up most of the day. My days in Pal World are roughly 22 or so minutes, and without the help of pals, this project took a very long time to finish. Nevertheless, with the Nightwing saddle finished, I took to the skies on my maiden flight, and it was exciting to leave the land dwellers behind. I admit, I got a little too big for my breeches and tried to take out this 38 Mamarest boss. It nearly one-shot my chillet, and I began to run for the safety of the travel beacon. Luckily for me, though, it lost interest and went back to its normal patrol. When I got back to the safety of my base, I began preparing for the boss fight at Rain Syndicate Tower. As I was crafting a fresh set of pal balls, the Syndicate itself decided to raid my base. My Dinosum took it really personal, and flattened their entire raiding party in one shot. Dinosum didn't take attitude from no one. Dinosum scared me. Today was a very big day. I was leaving home to fight my first boss battle at a tower. I was kind of nervous because I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And if I messed this up, I'd look stupid in front of thousands of strangers on the internet. And nobody wants to look stupid in front of strangers. We arrived at the Rain Syndicate Tower and teleported inside. Our first fight was Zoe and her massive pal called Grizzbolt. I was kind of jealous of Grizzbolt. In a way, I too wanted to have a spunky anime girl sit on my back. But alas, we covet most in life what we cannot have. Grizzbolt was like a dad after a few glasses of funny juice. If you got too close, he'd hit you really hard. I let Dinosum sort out the majority of it. During the fight, I discovered that if you cycle through pals, they will heal in their pal ball until you use them again. I would use this to my advantage and cycle between my heavy hitters, like Dinosum and Ekdir. After a few minutes, Zoe and Grizzbolt went down, and I had my first major boss completion. I was feeling quite ecstatic. Dinosum even teabagged Zoe. <laughs> What a savage. After the fight, I was transported to the top of the tower, unlocked a fast travel, and noticed the settlement down below. I parachuted in for a closer look, and engaged the syndicate goons below. In a cage, there was an imprisoned pal that I set free, and in return, it joined my party. This fellow was called Arsox. When I returned home, I felt invigorated and tried to take out this Mamarest and face the consequences of my actions. After I got my stuff back, I went AFK to use the restroom. I wanted to see what would happen when I was away, and apparently it wasn't much. When I took a look at the skill tree, I noticed that I could use points in an ancient technology tree and unlocked a feed bag. 
and a grappling gun. The feed bag would automatically feed your party pals for you. The next day, while I was looking over my pals, the Syndicate decided to launch another raid on my base, and were quickly dealt with by angry, probably overworked pals. After the beatdown, I began crafting my Chalette saddle with the help of Daydream. With her help, the project took half the time the Nightwing saddle did. And after a job well done, I began crafting a pal egg incubator and plopped that fire egg that I found a few days ago into it. I had a few minutes to burn, so I ran into the world again, mounted atop Chalette. I wanted to fight a dungeon in Pal to see if I could catch it. This one was called Pen King. As soon as I set foot in the dungeon, I was gunned down, before I could even react. So I began the run of shame back to the dungeon to collect my things. This took a while, but with the snap of a finger, here we are. Back at it for round two. I'm gonna be real with you all. I don't know why I was using an ice pal to fight another ice pal. I realized my mistake as I'm editing this video, especially when I had R Sox in my pal party. I think it's a good time to mention that I played this game for 24 hours straight to make this video. I did not sleep hardly a wink and I didn't eat or drink. Please leave a like, it goes a long way. But I got what I deserved. Instead of doing the smart thing and leveling my freshly found Arsox, I decided to do the roundabout solution and craft myself a fire bow and some fire arrows. When I finished with those tasks, I checked up on the fire egg in the incubator, and when it hatched, it turned into another Arsox. So now I have two decent fire pals that I would never use because I'm an idiot. Day 16, and I was ready to face the day. I wanted to fight Pain King once again, so here we go. I died. I tried again, and used Arsox this time. I remembered that I had him. And he got crumpled in seconds. I fought my little heart out, but I got crumpled too. While all of that was going on, I had an ice egg incubating back at base, and it turned out to be another Chillette. After collecting my stuff from the dungeon entrance, I decided I'd go out and explore the world a bit more. I used my Nightwing and flew across the water to another island and collected a large electric egg. In the distance, I saw the sparkles of another shiny pal. This one was called Robin Quill. I thought I'd try my luck, and it one-shot my Nightwing, and I was next. It despawned. I never saw it again. I didn't have a fast travel to the new island, so I had to get my stuff back the good old-fashioned way. Chalette and I fought, rock climbed, ran through the fields of pals, and snuck around an all-out war between humans and pals. I got my stuff back, and without skipping a beat, I unlocked the fast travel just in case this time. Back at base, I threw the egg into the incubator and made the decision to upgrade my base. I was tired of living in this shack, and I started tearing down my old house and placed new stone foundations down. I was still in the process of upgrading my base when I was hit with yet another syndicate raid. These guys really hated me. After that little interruption, I boxed up my pals to let them heal from work-related injuries, and I continued to build. I personally liked the aesthetics of stone and wood, and had a combo of both for my base. Unfortunately, there were gaps between the walls and the door, so my quick fix solution was just to place sandbags to block intruders. I tried to make my pals' living quarters as comfortable as I could, given my limited resources. I let some pals out of the box to help with the workload, and by the time this was finished, it was day 18. To keep my pals nice and fed, I placed down a few buried crop plots and a wheat plot to keep myself fed. Right away, my pals got to work cultivating the land by planting seeds and watering crops. Oh, I also hatched this beacon. He looked really cool. I guess I spent the first bit of day 19 AFK, I don't know why. I think I was eating a sandwich or something. When I stepped out of the base, I noticed a shiny lamb ball out of the corner of my eye, and I had to have it. I mounted up on Ekdir and took care of its entourage. I caught it at the last moment before my pals could kill it. Oh, was cutting it kind of close with that one, huh? I was running low on pal resources, so I went into the world and began terrorizing the locals a little bit. And I caught a few for good measure as well. I can always use a larger workforce. The economy runs on those who are underpaid and overworked. I didn't get settled in for too long because I was raided yet again, this time by the Power World mascot, Relaxosaurus. I thought these guys were really rare at the time, and I took this raid as an opportunity to catch one. Good thing too, because the other Relaxosauruses got wrecked. After a successful day, I placed down some fresh crafting stations to build tomorrow. I continued to build up my base into day 20, and I actually threw my pal out into the world. This happens fairly often, and if you decide to play Power World for yourself after watching this video, you know exactly what I mean. I finally had enough metal to upgrade my basic tools. Hey, it only took 20 days, but it felt good to get rid of these archaic relics. I once again challenged that Mamoress that was wandering near my base, and I would come to regret that decision very quickly and decisively. I thought I had a pretty stacked army of pals, and that they would smoke anything that was deemed a threat. I watched from the safety of the bridge as the Mamorist ran through my entire workforce. I was throwing everything in the kitchen sink at this Mamorist. It was way too formidable. When I tried to switch out more pals, its tornado attack got me. 
I threw more pals at it, and it seemed like we were making some good progress. I was down to my last set of pals. After making short work of my team, another tornado attack sent me packing. After two defeats, and my base in shambles, and over 40 incapacitated pals, I conceded defeat. I surveyed the damage, and began repairs. I was able to finally craft myself a shield, and if you're familiar with Halo at all, think of it as an overshield that absorbs incoming damage and restores itself over time. My shiny lamb ball ran over to help me craft it, and, uh, uh, yeah. You know what? I don't have anything funny to say. As I was crafting, some man-eating pals came to say hello. They didn't get very far. I did manage to capture Elise Punk at the last second. This warning message wouldn't go away, so I started looking around my base for more pals that might be in the area. And, I noticed a dire howl glitching out by a tree. Well, I wasn't one to turn down a free dire howl, so I caught it easily. One of the coolest pal designs, hands down. I saw in the tech tree that you can craft a dire howl saddle and ride it around, and I got to work farming leather right away. She ran really fast, and with her help, I farmed up some metal nodes, and then I called it a day. I set up my forges for smelting for when my pals woke up, and crafted up a sphere workbench, and it would allow me to craft higher quality pal balls. Wait, these things are called sphere... pal spheres? Have I been saying it wrong this entire time? No one told me. Well, we can't dwell on mistakes of the past. Making an upgrade cooking station was the next thing on my list. I was going a bit crazy just sitting at base all the time, and I wanted to go out and explore. I teleported through the fast travel beacon to that new island I discovered a few days ago, and immediately was beset upon by really aggro pals called Gale Claw. They knocked out my dire howl. I summoned my Relaxosaurus to help fight, but I got caught, unfortunately. As I was running to get my stuff back, I was being shot at, and I dodge rolled for my literal life. I got my stuff back and made a daring escape over the side of this cliff, where I found a floating in distress. I took out the assailant and captured it. Yeah, I'm sure it wouldn't mind. Later on, I was exploring a bit more and went to collect a crate that I found on the ground, when all of a sudden, I was attacked by a robin quill. We got into a scrape, and it almost took out my nightwing, but we prevailed and added it to our growing collection. Much to my amusement, the Relaxosaurus just pukes up water, and it looks like it's in a lot of pain. With my base chores secured, I decided to do a little ore farming for the rest of the day. Was back at it again on day 24, out into the world and catching more pals, like the smell Paca. I noticed these giant bones and decided to have a closer look. After flying around for a bit, I found a cave and wanted to go in. At the time, I didn't realize that it was a dungeon. You might remember, I asked a question on day one. Can I capture a human? Turns out, yes you can. You can capture a whole dude. The game tells you that's inhumane, but I consider it a rehabilitation program. After wandering around for a bit, I found the end boss, and well, first time didn't go so well. With the power of editing, here we are back at the end boss again. This time it was a jolt hog. When I got it low enough, I captured it. Check the end dungeon chests. I got a defense pendant, which would be helpful, and a ruby. I have no idea what this is for. And the skill point book. Pretty decent for five minutes of work. When we left the cave, I also captured a cell array. I was able to craft a musket finally. I just needed to clear this dungeon first. After fighting my way through swaths of goons, I found some sulfur and mined it. This would be important for gunpowder. Before long, we were at this cave's end boss, a large rush roar. The smaller rush roars surrounding it didn't do much, and we caught the big one super easy. Din loot wasn't anything to write home to mom about. I got a seed ability, and I have no idea what this does, and I never used it. If you guys know what these are for, please let me know in the comments. After leaving the cave, I ran along the river and stumbled upon this poor sign old man. He gave me a spiel that he was a cop, and he ended up in Power World after a work-related accident. After saying goodbye, he gave me, a small, impressionable girl, a slice of pizza, and I was on my merry way. Further into the new island, I flew into a syndicate camp and freed a flambel while they were distracted with some hootcrities. And then I headed to the fast travel beacon. I had full intentions on going home, but I got distracted by a pair of loop moon. The one I tried to capture kept breaking out of its pal sphere. The game recommended that I use a better pal sphere, but you know what? Anything can be solved with brute force. I swear I was trying to leave when I got distracted by this cognito, and I had to capture it because they looked like funny little critters. We knocked out my Nightwing, and I was over encumbered from random stuff that was on the ground. I was too nervous to drop anything out of my inventory, and I cut it really close. 
As the sun rose into day 26, I did capture the cognito. Right on the start of day 26, I found some cow-looking pals called Mazarina. They looked silly, so I decided I would try and catch one, or both if I could. They were pretty docile, and the first one I captured didn't seem too pleased about the current situation it found itself in. After capturing the Mazarina, I found this huge Brachiosaurus looking pal, and of course I was compelled to tame it. Why? Because it looked cool. With the help of my dire howl, we got this gentle giant to cooperate, and it became mine. It did take a few tries though. The second Mazarina from earlier decided to come back for round two, and it happily joined the team against its will. I noticed some sea serpent looking pals in the water below, and they were called Surfent, and yep, they looked cool, had to have one. It didn't quite go to plan, they escaped all the pal spheres, and they became really angry. I just said screw it, ran the opposite direction and released my Dinosum to mop up the mess. A large electric egg that I was incubating hatched into a Univolt, and we get a better look at him later. I started crafting my Univolt a saddle, and my touchy Lamball gave me a hand. Between us, Syndicate wrong. guy was giving me the creeps. He helps around the base, sure, but it's just so jarring to see a dude decked out in a Gopnik tracksuit among some cutesy anime-style pals. I checked up on my hard-working Tombats and gave them some lovings, and it seems like they really appreciated the attention. With their hard work, I was able to craft a Mega Spheres, and these would allow me to capture more powerful pals. Oh, I also tamed this duck thing at some point, I don't remember doing it, but hey, it's here. The name skirts the YouTube content policy, so I won't be saying it out loud. It was boss day. I wanted to fight some bosses and tame them. First, I started with a cat witch called Catress, the Phantasmal Feline. I just ran around and let Dinosum fight her. Dinosum's seed mine attack does a stupid amount of damage. Holy moly. He eventually went down. I was really tired, and I wasn't firing in all pistons for this fight, so I was quite sloppy. I let out Flambelle, and as luck would have it, Catress got stuck on a broken pillar. I was very stupid and got too close, causing her pathing to reset, and she almost one-shot me. I let out Nightwing, and he fared a lot better. Catress was gunning for me, and all I could do was run around the arena, screaming, while Nightwing chipped away at her health. Before I could capture her, Nightwing wombo comboed her, and that was that. I was mildly upset. Luckily for me, I could repeat this fight after a very reasonable cooldown timer. I went home and crafted a three-shot bow and a healthy amount of arrows. 600 should be enough. Then I swapped out my party pals and headed out again, this time to fight a boss called Bushi. Bushi was a pal that reminded me of Yojimbo from Final Fantasy, and I really liked him. Thus, I wanted to capture him. The fight wasn't too difficult. Bushi telegraphed his attacks, so it was kind of easy to read, but if you weren't paying attention, he'd slice you a couple times. I tried to capture him twice, and then died. Unfortunately for me, my flambelle dealt the killing blow on him, and he died. I didn't get any loot for that fight either, and he's on a one hour cooldown. Rip, whole lot of nothing going on today. I just farmed ore, watched my pals work, crafted myself a lantern that makes it so you don't need a torch in dark areas and upgraded my helmet to metal. Then I was back at it again, mining ore into the night. Pen King, we meet again. Ready yourself for combat. For this day, you shall meet your doom. I died. Aha, uh -huh. Pen King, you thought you could best me that easily? Well, you got another thing coming, pal. I tried to use Nightwing to lower Pen King just enough so I could catch him, and Nightwing went down. It was time for my new Univolt to show me what he can really do. Turns out he can do a lot because Pen King went right from the safe zone into the danger zone and passed out before I could catch him. I resigned to my fate and just left the whole Pen King mess behind me. Univolt and I were running around exploring this beautiful autumn grove when we found a clearing and it was the home to an Elphedran. Elphedran? This dragon. I loved everything about this dragon and wanted to make it mine. So my team of pals and I got to work fighting this mighty beast. Elphedrin was no pushover, and she ran through my palace like a D1 linebacker. Left with little choice, I tried to flee with my dignity intact. She was enraged, and chased me back down the hill. And I made my final stand on this bridge. If I was going down, I was going down a hero. I'm not sure what Elphedrin used to defeat me right here, but I just got folded, out of nowhere. My travel pals were down for the count, and I ran home after collecting my stuff, defeated. I didn't have time to rest, right on the dawn of day 31 I was being raided by Toko Toko birds. I figured I'd be proactive and stop them before they got to my base. They didn't get very far, and I managed to catch two of them. Yeah, I'm cooking again. 
I was just using this opportunity to show off how cute my character was, nothing more. I started crafting a weapons workbench, finally, so I can create better weapons. I saw the upgrade for the Toko Toko. You can hold them and shoot eggs from them like a grenade launcher. I was all over that. I needed it. I got the gloves crafted and took my Toko Toko out for a test run and let these pals have it. With a spank, eggs began to fly like the 4th of July. The only drawback was a very short window to use the ability and a super long cooldown to use it again. So you gotta make it count. I crafted another ranch for my pals as well today. Univolt and I ran back to where the Ephedron was waiting and we started round two with this fairy dragon. I dove in and got to work. With Toko Toko's help, we began to bombard the Ephedron. Unfortunately, while quite the spectacle, it didn't hardly do any damage. I did try to juggle her though. I wanted to see if I could keep her in the air with explosive eggs. I whipped out the tried and true Dinosum. He chonked her health to great effect. Then it was Nightwing's turn. Then once again, I used Univolt. Before she met her end, I tossed out a Hail Mary Gigasphere with a 19% capture chance. This was it. Success. I wasted no time crafting a feeder in her saddle. And with her help, I took on the Mamoress that has been haunting my base for the last 32 days. I did die and fell through the map. I was freaking out because I thought that I lost all of my stuff. Good and bad news. The good news is, my stuff is still on land. The bad. The angry Mamorest was guarding it. I didn't dare die again because I thought my bag would despawn. I kited desperately, jumping off of this small hill and climbing back up when it was safe. I chanced it and rolled in to collect my stuff. I threw out Toko Toko and discovered that he blows himself up. I was quite flabbergasted and took a hit. I fought this Mamorest into the night. With a Gigasphere, we caught the Mamorest. It was a darn good day. Good job, team. I've made some better pal beds and erected, please don't laugh, a silo. This helped my farming pals with better production, equally more food per hour. Then I crafted some bullets for me musket. And that's about all that happened today. What are the bullets without a musket to use them? I began crafting one with haste. You know I got that thang on me. It was round two with Catress. With my musket and the help of my dire howl, we began willing her health down. Eventually my dire howl did bite it. I wasn't playing any more games and whipped out the Mamorest. The Mamorest did take the extra damage from Catress's flame attacks, but its tornadoes did a ton of damage. With that, I did capture her very smoothly this time. Caught Pen King lacking, dude was sleeping, and I gave him what for. And with my musket, I almost one-shot him. Holy mackerel. Pen King also somehow escaped a 97% Giga Ball? Like, what? Didn't escape this time, though. Next up was Bushi. I let him know I was here with a love tap to the back of the dome. Reloading the musket during the fight was a pain, so I just let the Mamorest at him. After a few back and forths, Bushi was now mine. While exploring the bamboo groves on day 35, I looked up and saw this neat bird looking guy, and I wanted to tame it. I lost sight of the one that I was tracking, but I did find a small group of them, and I thought about engaging all three for a moment. But sanity prevailed, and I lowered my musket. The one I was initially tracking must have landed for a rest, because as soon as I turned around, it attacked me. I lined up my shot, and almost took it out with one hit. I panic tossed a pal sphere, but it escaped. The second time, I managed to catch it, and all of the van worms in the area aggroed on me. It was time to use the big guns. Elphedrin mopped up the rest, and we headed back home. I wanted to craft the van worm a saddle, but I was lacking on flame organs. So back into the world I went. I killed the Islander, just because, and started terrorizing the Fire Pals. After farming the organs I needed, huh, you know what, that sounds weird when I say it out loud. Oh well. When we got back home, the Free Pal Alliance decided to pop in for a visit, and my pals proceeded to pop them all over the grass. In hindsight, I should have caught one. Imagine the sitcom-style comedy of the Syndicate guy and a Free Pal Alliance guy, like two roommates who are always at ends, but they're both jocular and well-meaning. Don't steal that idea. It's a good idea. I wanted to fight another boss today, and fresh into the morning on day 36, I upgraded my Elphedron. And I wanted to upgrade my Van Worm, mostly his stamina so he could stay in the air for longer. But that isn't a thing, I guess. Oh well. I reached my destination and climbed on a small rock wall, plucked a Pal Sphere from the Void, and entered the cave. 
This place was crawling with syndicate thugs. It felt like you couldn't even move 10 feet without bumping into a tracksuit. After cutting my way through the chaff, I captured a Nox. Elphedrin was my heaviest hitter now, next to Mamarest. I mounted and began fighting even more syndicate thugs. It just never ends. I parachuted down this hall, only to find a chest with some pretty mediocre loot, unfortunately. Fought more thugs, and when I went to dismount Elphedrin, I got stuck in the wall. Left with little option, I hit respawn. I respawned on a new island, somewhat near where I bit it, and I ran into a cowardly islander. I didn't really care much for what he had to say, and began the long flight back to my belongings. I managed to get my stuff back no problem. I was really worried it would have despawned. The end dungeon boss was a huge turtle guy. Totally not Bowser. Haha, <laughs> Nintendo, am I right? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I'm in constant pain. Digitoys was kind of a pushover. I did have a super-powered Elphedrin, sure. With minimal effort and a lot of dodge rolling, I managed to capture him. The chest loot was kind of meh, honestly. As I was flying around, I found a syndicate camp. This one had a machine gunner. The sheer number of syndicate thugs. The machine gunner, this relaxosaurus that wouldn't mind its own business for some reason. It was just too much. So I retreated and opted to pick them off one by one on this grassy hill, armed with nary but a trusty musket. I was getting some revolutionary war vibes from this. Tally ho lads, give them no quarter. The machine gun guy was a bit tricky to deal with. I tried to catch him a few times, but after a few attempts I just gave up. That pal that was trapped in the cage was actually a tansy. Dang, if I had known that, I would have just left him in there. Tansy is a fairly common pal. I found another camp and freed the Nox from this cage. All in all, this was a huge waste of bullets. I did find a huge dragon egg in my travels, with just a small two hour incubation time, nothing to worry about. My quest for world bosses continued. I explored a new land and saw these curious creatures that looked like mops. The small ones were called Swee, and the big one was called a Sweepa. I tried to catch the mustached Sweepa, but it passed out before I could get to it. I did capture a Swee though. Second time, I caught a Sweepa and moved on. I stopped a few times to liberate the land from the plague of the Syndicate, and when I flew across the lake, I saw a massive Jormantide. This thing was way out of my league, but I wasn't one to shy away from a challenge. I lined up my shot and tickled the Great Worm. You can probably imagine what happened next. People say that pals look like Pokemon, but this guy looks like a Seedramon, honestly. It took a good portion of day 39, but I got my stuff back. I did catch the Serpent as well. All it took was shooting it in the head and using a Super Pal Sphere. Yet, I still feel hollow. I found another boss dungeon and entered. This was a Relaxosaurus Lux, the electric version of the Relaxosaurus. I thought it said Relaxosaurus Rex, which sounds cooler, honestly. Before this fight, I went to eat a can of green beans for dinner, and the can opener didn't open the lid all the way. I went to force open the can lid with a fork, and my hand slipped over the lid, causing me to get a huge gash in my right pinky. It was really horrendous, and there was a lot of blood. I legit almost passed out, so I apologize if my playing seems a little jank. I was doing this with a mortal wound. With the help of Mamarest, we caught the gluttonous Thunder Dragon. I was in a lot of pain IRL, so I went straight home and dealt with my cut. I placed down another grinder and set my new pals on the base and watched them work for a little while. I noticed that Dig Toys was hitting the mining pit really hard, and he was a natural. With him, I'd never want for stone again. Short day today, my hand was still in pain, and I didn't do much. I was out and about exploring today, in a dark wooded area. I ran across a grin tail and began fighting it. Since it was a lower level, it was easy. Later in the day, I found a pack of Gory Rat... I can't... Gory Rat? What kind of name is that? I thought this was going to be business as usual, but I got flattened. When I respond, I saw a desert runaway and ran up to him to talk. He told me of a desert that lay to the north, and I wanted to explore it, but before I could go do that, I needed to craft myself some heat-resistant armor. I picked up my stuff and went round two with the gory rat. He was a tough little bugger, and I used a good amount of pal spheres on him, until I whipped out the mega sphere. Once again, I was low on metal, and set out to farm some so I could craft some heat-resistant armor. While I was crafting my new set of armor, I was raided. The raiders had realized their mistake and began running away, and I gave chase. This demon goat guy stopped for some reason, and I caught it. He went to work right in the mines. 
I got right back to crafting my armor. I wanted to get into the desert with expedience. Never mind the fact it took most of the day to craft this armor, honestly. Van Worm and I fast traveled and crossed the sea to this new uncharted land. This desert was home to new types of pals that I had never seen before, like the Robin Quill Terra. As I was flying, I saw it. A Lovender! I engaged in combat with it, on the ground. With the help of my new heavyweight champion, Mamarest. The battle raged on for a few minutes. Every pal sphere I tried to use would just bounce off of the Lovender. And I had to unfortunately, begrudgingly, leave the fight. But I did leave with something. The knowledge of where they spawned. So that was a victory in its own way. I flew around the desert today looking around for more Lovanders. I didn't find any at all. I just flew around aimlessly, looking for who knows what. I eventually came across a PIDF tower, but I couldn't go inside. And I found this fast travel location, so that would make getting here easier in the future. I found myself a shiny Toko Toko and engaged it. I let Mamarest out, and the tornadoes began to fly. I didn't do much to help. So I just ran around in circles. When Mamarest went down, it was time for Relaxosaurus Lux to take his place. The Toko Toko blew up and took my Relaxosaurus with it. And then I was next. When I got back to the desert, I didn't have any heat resisting gear on me, and it was a race against the clock to get all of my stuff back before I died again. Luckily, I made it just in time. I went out to explore the desert, and as soon as night fell, I encountered something I completely forgot about. Deserts at night can become very cold. I was nowhere near the fast travel, and my health was dropping like a sack of bricks. Unfortunately, the cold had claimed me. I laid down for sleep on day 44, and when the sun rose, I was being raided by Lovenders. I was caught without my gear, and I was in a full-blown panic. I searched desperately through all of my chests for any pal spears. The Lovenders began to retreat, and I tried to attack them, hoping they would stop to fight back. No luck. I managed to trap one in a sphere, but it broke out and despawned right before my eyes. I was super frustrated. I had a handful of Lovenders handed to me, and I missed my shot. I headed back to the desert to grab my stuff. I found a cave to explore and ran across these Pyran Noct. They were way too strong for me. It was nighttime again, and I was freezing to death. I let out Arsox to see if he would help me warm up, but it really didn't make any difference. I was once again too far away from the fast travel beacon, and I died. Once again. I needed a break from the desert, and I decided to stay home today and spend time with my pals and catch up on some chores. As the sun went down, once again, I headed into the desert. But, I was cold again, which is weird because when I first came to the desert, I wasn't freezing to death at all, so it doesn't make much sense. But it is what it is. I went back home and started farming the ore needed to make some cold-resistant armor. I slowly watched my incineram smell ore into ingots. I couldn't do much else, so I just chilled. When the sun came up, I made a lot of hatcheries to hatch all these eggs that I had collected in the past 47 days. After all this time, I was swimming in ancient civilization parts, a key ingredient to make specialized structures and equipment. I finally crafted my cold-resistant armor and headed back into the desert. After flying around most of the night without any luck, I did spot a lavender and fired off a shot to get her attention. A huge fight broke out. And I used a mix of pals and gunfire to fight this Lovender. She was tough. And we were barely making a dent. We fought well into day 48. It was approaching noon. This random beacon shows up out of nowhere and began to fight the Lovender. And managed to knock her out! My blood boiled. I saw red. We triple teamed this beacon and knocked it out out of pure spite. In hindsight, I should have probably caught it and made it work for me forever. That would have been a, the better revenge. Oh well. For the rest of day 48, I spent most of my time farming the materials to make a sphere assembly, which would allow me to craft more powerful pal spheres. I will say, I got it crafted, but I never used it, so I'm going to move straight on to day 49. I got the assembly line placed, and saw all of the requirements to get this thing running, so I turned 360 degrees and walked away right into day 50. Since Mega Spheres were out of the question, I did craft a decent amount of Giga Spheres. I headed back into the desert at night, and I didn't find any Lovenders at all. I checked the entire coastline for them too. Nothing. The sun rose into day 51, and I went back home. Well, no Lovenders, but I did feel powerful enough to take on this Mamorous boss that we've been seeing for the past 50 days. I kited it with my musket and cycled between all of my strongest pals. 
Seeing a Mamarest that's the size of a semi-truck chasing you fills a man with a primal fear. My Mamarest was a real trooper, and was the MVP of this entire fight. He didn't do an insane amount of damage, but his tornado attacks allowed me to create gaps between the Mamarest and myself. And I was very meticulous between swapping my pals, taking care not to let them pass out. However, the more the fight raged on, the more tired we became, until my pals started faint one by one. At the last moment, we caught the boss Mamarest. I quickly ran home to swap out my pals. Night was approaching, and I wanted to take another shot at getting a Lovender. Luckily, I didn't have to go very far at all. The Lovenders were spawned right at the teleporter, and we engaged in our final fight. Since the Lovenders were very strong, I used that boss Mamarest to lay down some serious DPS. One Lovender went down. I hit level 30, and I threw a desperate pal spear. Time froze. The capture number got higher and higher until success. I did it. I caught the remaining one and headed right home. And as the sun rose into day 52, I pet my lavender. Warning. Due to discretion. And in this episode of 100 Days Power World, we will soon discover that being loud equals funny, or having no personality will get you tons of views. Why is this phenomenon? Stay tuned to find out. I never follow this plot. My PC had a blue screen of death wiping the save from my list of worlds, but thanks to a YouTube tutorial, I managed to restore it. During that week when I didn't play on this save file, I played on a different world and learned so much about PAL World. I needed to make some changes, and I needed to get this one back on track. Uh, yeah, my computer blue screened again, and Day 52 does not exist. I got myself a Gale Claw on Day 52, but that footage is gone, so here I am, making a set of gloves for the Gale Claw. The best glider in the game, and it will never leave my party. My starter base was feeling a bit cramped, and I wanted to move to a better location. For those of you who are curious about where I'm settling next, it's right by the Pen King boss dungeon on the beach. I got my power box placed and began the long process of moving. I finally finished moving and I had a dragon sword of ancient civilization parts and I made some incubation stations for the pile of pal eggs that I had accumulated. I got myself a Pyronoct and a Wixen. I liked Wixen and I'd use them a lot later on in the video. I was also waiting on that huge dragon egg that I got a while ago and I'm just now starting to hatch it. I wanted to make some eggs of my own so I built myself a breeding ranch too. This might be way too many incubation stations but hey the more the merrier right? After I hatched my final egg at my old base, I said goodbye and glided to the fast travel with my Gale Claw, and went home to check up on all the eggs I was incubating and hatched a few. I got some okay ones, but I didn't waste too much time at home because I was back at it in the world. With Van Worm, I flew deep into the bamboo groves. I wanted to catch a Quivern. Quivern? I can't say these names, man. A giant fluffy dragon. The fight was super easy. I think it was because I was just a bit overleveled. Hey, check it out, here's an awesome segue. I was on the other side of the island and I wanted to tame a bee guard. These little guys produce honey, a key ingredient to make cake. The item needed to make pals breed. I don't know how cake does that, but eh. Oh, I'm probably just overthinking this. The only problem with bee guard is that they have a penchant for blowing themselves up even at the slightest of provocations. But it did allow me to catch this crazy clip of me skeet shooting a Masanda. Amidst all the confusion, I did catch a bee guard, and eventually a Masanda as well. Before I went home, since I was in the area, I took on War Sect, a giant beetle. I was a complete pal master with Wixen, weaving him in and out of combat before War Sect could do some serious damage. With a 1% chance of capture, I threw the pal sphere and caught him, no sweat. I woke up today and chose to create a fortress tavern thing, so here's a building montage. Man, I love building montages. I don't have to talk. All I gotta do is just clip together a bunch of footage. Isn't that awesome? Now, oh, well, not many people make it this far in my videos anyway. So hey, if you made it this far, comment like uh, Scooby Dooby Doo, or, <laughs> or I don't know. Just engage. I command it. Or don't. You're a grown person. I can't control what you do. Merely suggest. Please, I have a family to feed. I continued to build my new base into day 57. Here I was, creating a workshop attachment where I'll place all of my crafting stations. I also used this build to become familiar with Power World's building mechanics. It was kind of wonky, but I think I figured out a few tricks to get things to work. After getting my workshop built, I celebrated by crafting myself a brand new grappling gun. And I just noticed as I'm reviewing this footage that I placed a bookshelf with alcohol 
next to my crafting station? Well, you know, nothing ever bad happens when you combine sharp objects and adult beverages. I wanted to build myself an assembly line, and I was lacking the electric organs needed to make one. So off into the wilds I went with Warsect, and I farmed Univolt for some easy electric organs. While out and about, we stormed the Syndicate camp, and I freed a Mal Christ from its cage. After that distraction, I was back to farming organs. Before heading home, I encountered a Kelpsy that really, really didn't want to come home with me. So what's wrong, little buddy? Don't you want to work for me for eternity and leave your family and friends behind? It eventually listened to reason, though. It didn't really have a choice. When I got home, I hatched that huge dragon egg and was gifted a Jormantide Ignis. Ignis? This fire snake. The greatest fire pal in the game. Loud equals funny, right? In the background of my adventures, I was crafting a heater. A girl can never be too careful these days, am I right, fellas? I needed ammo, so I paid the merchants in the desert a visit, and bought a few rounds. I was so excited to show the lady from the beginning of the game how much I was thriving in Power World, and I paid her a short visit too. Here's what makes Jormantide Ignis the best fire pal in the game. It has kindling tier 4, and it just smelts bars like there's no tomorrow. I needed more at some point. I crafted a power generator, officially marking my escape from the Dark Ages. With little else to do for the day, I worked on my base throughout the night. I found myself in the desert once again. This time I was flying over to the wildlife sanctuary to catch a lion lean. I wanted one because it was a great utility pal for the base. I flew across the sea not knowing what I'd find. There were a lot of powerful pals here, like Astagon. I really wanted to catch it so I proceeded with caution. This Astagon was way stronger than any of my pals and I was out of my league. The fight took almost all day. And with Warsex's help, I did get it down far enough to capture it. Unfortunately, it broke out of all of my pal spheres. And the regular pal spheres just weren't cutting it, so I put it down. It hurt a lot. And I would find out very soon that I would come to regret this decision. Astagon knocked out my van worm, so I was trapped in the wildlife sanctuary now. And, as I was formulating a plan to leave, I saw this glowing pal down below named Orsirk. I knew it was kind of rare, so I tried my luck. The Orsirk took out most of my battle pals, and at the last moment, I threw a Gigasphere and caught it. So here's what I was talking about. At the time when I was fighting Astagon, I wasn't looking at my pal spheres, and I didn't see that I had an extra Gigasphere left, and my regret comes back to haunt me. When the sun came up, I took a leap and began swimming back to the shore. I made it, just barely. Little did I know at the time that there was a fast travel beacon down the beach, and I somehow missed it. I attracted the attention of the syndicate and they began shooting at me as I was trying to scale this cliffside. I took a leap of faith, and with my gale claw, I tried to grab the ledge, and yeah. Well guys, I tried. Now began the race against time to get my stuff back. I was woefully underprepared for this, and I was cooking alive under the desert sun. I died right before I could get to my stuff. And the third time, I did get my stuff back right before I died. And I was being chased by some beacon, apparently. They shot at me with lightning. But with quick reflexes, I avoided another trip back to the base in shame. I crawled my way back to the desert city and went home. It took a while, but I finally made my dig twice a headband, and with a special ability, Drill Crusher, I was farming ore like a baller. I spent most of the day farming ore, and dropping it off at my base to be smelted. As the sun set, I heard the familiar sound of a lucky pal chiming. I didn't have any pal spheres on me, and if I left the area, it would just despawn. Quickly, I fashioned a workbench and made a few pal spheres and began the fight. I was naked to free up some carry weight and paid the price for it a few times. I was really squishy, and relied mostly on my pals to do the heavy lifting. Somehow the Smelpaka aggro the Mamoresk boss and they began fighting. Right at the last moment, I saved the Malpaka from dying, and it joined my team. Mm -mm -mm. I started off the day with some farming, and with the ore I gathered we crafted two cooking stations. This would allow me to craft the coveted cake. I wanted to breed for an Anubis as soon as possible, and this cooking pot would allow me to expedite the process. The Ormontide Ignis was a beast at cooking. I crafted a handful of Gigaspheres and headed out to tame some more pals. First up was King Paka, and with the help of Orzerk, we got him tamed up. The second boss was this Fanglope, and Orzerk is probably too strong for our own good. I'm not too terribly shaken up about it, I'll get a Fanglope later through breeding. Next, I wanted an Aqua Bronze Cherry. It was too dark, and I couldn't find it, and I spent most of the night just wandering around looking for the cave. I found the Aqua Bronze Cherry Cave and let Orsirk burst it down into capture range. My thought process was, surely, it won't be able to take it from 800 HP to zero with one attack. 
Well, I guess I was wrong. After that loss, I flew over to the Petalia boss arena and wanted to try my luck at capturing it. With success. While flying around, I heard the all too familiar chime of a lucky and searched the area. And I found a Cinemoth and smacked it to get its attention. It made all of the other Cinemoths in the area get mad and they started to dogpile me. Moth pile? Moth pit. And I began rolling for my life. Sneaking out a cheeky palsphere before biting it. What happens next is quite confusing. That's not me editing the video to cut suddenly like that. That's the actual recording. I flew back to get my stuff and noticed that my game was bugged? Glitched? Uh... The Cinemoth capture screen wasn't going away, so I guess I caught the lucky? Alright, I won't complain, I'm just confused. A quick relog solved the issue, and I was back at it. Before calling it a day, I found this Felbat boss, and I tamed it up no problem. Today I wanted to start breeding pals. Whoa, whoa, not so fast there, tiger. Not me breeding with them, making them breed with each other. Calm down. But I was missing one important thing. Eggs. I needed a lot, so I went out and tamed more chicky peas, chicky pies. I never solved this. More chicken pals. <laughs> and to keep my dairy fresh, I placed a cooling box. I had some eggs to get started and queued up cake for Jormantiding. Jormantide? This giant fire snake to cook. I'm really becoming unhinged. I really just don't care anymore. <laughs> Here's where things get a little confusing. My computer blue screen so much during this playthrough, so I'm not sure what the actual day is. My notes say it's day 65, but I don't know really. I apologize. I can't afford to fix it. Bear with me. I could just make a 100 days Minecraft video and put a picture of a small animal crying on the thumbnail. That seems to get traction. Or talk like a plank of wood. I don't know. YouTube makes me mad. I, at some point, caught a Hell Zephyr. I scrubbed through hours of footage looking for when I caught this guy, but I couldn't find it. Anyway, if you breed a Hell Zephyr and a Lovander, you get an Anubis. I don't know how. I didn't remake this game. While these two love birds reptiles got to know each other a bit better, I did chores around the base. I mostly spent the day doing odd jobs around the base. I was attempting to breed the perfect Anubis worker, I say tempting because this was just a dice roll, honestly. It's all up to RNG if you get the pal you want. I also farmed ore that was around the base. Dig Toys' drill crusher was really cool to watch, and it's really loud. Check it out. Here's a neat trick. If you're encumbered, you can use your grappling gun to pull yourself over to a chest to free up inventory. Subscribe for more power roll tips and tricks. And my computer blue screen again. Never in my days has my computer blue screened so much. As I was breeding pals, I got this insane Petalia, and I did get a couple of Anubis. I began to craft my Hell Zephyr saddle, and just watch how fast Anubis crafts stuff. Oh, it's perfect. I would end up breeding a lot more Anubis throughout the next few weeks. They are just that good. I also wanted to breed a perfect Anubis with work traits, Artesian, Lucky, Serious, and Workaholic. I got pretty close, but didn't quite make it, unfortunately. With the Hell Zephyr saddle crafted, I took it out for a test flight, and it was so much better than Van Worm. Friendship ended with Van Worm, new friendship established with Hell Zephyr. Today I fought Lily and Lylene while waiting for pals to breed. Wixen and Hell Zephyr were the MVPs in this entire fight, so I just stayed back mostly. Oh, Urzerk was there too, I guess. Or Zerk, I don't know. When we were fighting, I didn't think we'd make it honestly, but we managed to just scrape by with a small victory. On the ground floor, I noticed a foxicle and quickly caught it before heading home. Whoa, oh day 69! For the funny number day, I tried fighting the Sibilix and it didn't go too well. On day 70, I got my stuff back. That's it. Some days are just shorter than others. I was tired of having metal bottlenecks. With Hell Zephyr by my side, we flew to a new metal base location. I saw a YouTube video giving the optimal metal and coal base build. I forgot the name of the video, so I apologize. But the layout is fairly simple. Make a platform in the center of this plateau, and here you will build a pal box and place your smelting forges. The layout allows resource nodes to respawn unobstructed. Of course, the Masanda were not happy about being relocated. After clearing out the locals, I spent the entire day getting this new base established, and I'd finish setting it up a bit more later. Anubis is hands down the best labor pal in the game. And in the background, I was still trying for the perfect one, but that was taking way too long, so I just decided to print Anubis by making Lovander and Hell's Effort get busy. Any Anubis is better than no Anubis. I only have 30 days left too, and I got stuff to do. I noticed something quite peculiar. Every time I traveled between bases, some of my pals were incapacitated. 
Now, I know we enslave pals to do our bidding, and working conditions could be better, and a steady diet of cooked berries probably isn't healthy, but I have the sneaking suspicion they're jumping off the cliff near my base. Nothing set in stone, but it seems likely. My metal farm was booming, and with this massive success of my new base, my metal troubles were all but solved in this playthrough. I'm not sure the exact math, but I think it generates to roughly about 300-ish metal per hour passively, which is great. Oh, I would also like to mention I don't remember taming these Suzaku. I'ma be real, taming every single pal takes a backseat in this 100 days. I did get pretty far, but it wasn't my main focus. It probably should've. It's easy content. I got my second base running at full functionality. Then it was full hands off now. But the most important thing today, I wanted to catch an Astagon. So I flew over to the nature preserve and they weren't spawning. So I tried my luck catching other pals like this Incineram Knot. It spirit bombed my Hell Zephyr, stranding me once again, but it died thanks to Ozerk. And the Shadow Beak that died made me. Well, at least I wasn't stranded anymore. I came back the next day, hoping for an Astagon. Instead, I got myself a Lyleen, one of the best medicine pals, if not the best. After we caught her, an Incineram knocked, once again killed my Hell Zephyr, stranding me yet again. You think I would learn at this point? As I jumped across the ocean, I tried to catch a Hang Yu, but I caught a case of death instead. I came back to get my stuff, and headed back to my metal base to AFK for the dawn. I was kind of getting tired of my Relaxosaurus Lux. He really didn't do much to help out around the base, so Quivern and I flew out searching for a Mossanda Lux. Why Mossanda Lux, you may ask? Well, Mossanda have the ability to help cut down trees. They haul stuff into storage boxes, and the Mossanda Lux would help keep my base powered while I was gone. Quivern and I engaged the Mossanda Lux, and we were interrupted by Syndicate Thugs. I wasted a lot of spears trying to get this Mossanda Lux, but we eventually got it, and I was doing the Lord's work before heading back home. For some reason, my Anubis were passing out while I was gone. I suspect they were falling off the cliff still. And hey, while we're here, here's a cool trick. If you want pals to recover faster, just drop them into your base, and your other pals will carry them to an empty bed. For some reason, this heals them faster. After taking a step back and looking at the numbers, every time I post a Power World video, I see people unsubscribing in droves. So I'm going to do what no YouTuber has ever done in a 100 days video. Speedrun the last 25 days to the finish, sacrificing the absolute bag I make on YouTube just to get out of this video so I can jump to the next one that will inevitably be suppressed by YouTube's ever oppressive algorithm. I had a whole big finale planned and I was going to throw in an extra 50 days at the end as a treat, but no, this is why we can't have nice things. So here we go. <sighs> Day 76, upgraded all of my secondary gear and fought a boss. She kept escaping spears, so I killed her and caught a big gumas. Day 77, I went out farming pals, getting the bones was trash, so I fought King Alpaca for sellable stuff and bought them from a merchant. Day 78, I farmed quartz in the snow and I tried to fight a wumpo and it soloed my entire team, stranding me. I died, formulated a plan to make pal armor, sold a bunch of stuff to get shirts, got my stuff back, dang. Day 79, I got tired of waiting for Laxaurus and Serpent to make Paldium, so I said F it and bred to make a Yorman Tide and made my assembly line finally, made Ultra Sphere. Day 80, came back after a long break from the save, and I have no idea what I'll do, so I guess I'll just tame Bronze Cherry Aqua, try to tame Zoe and Grisbolt, didn't work. Day 81, I made my refined metal armor and bred to a Tide to replace the solar water pals at my base, and noticed a huge improvement. Day 82, fought Mamoris to power level pals, and then I fought Villette, accidentally killed it sadly. Day 83, found a lucky Suzaku, wasn't taking no for an answer, spent all day fighting it, caught it at night, I am the luckiest man alive. Day 84, crafted Suzaku with a saddle. Flew around looking for an Astagon. Couldn't find one. Suzaku is a great flyer. Dang. Day 85. Wanted to tame an Astagon, but couldn't find any. Headed for the world boss. Found out if you want to waste a lot of resources, use the scatter cannon. Had no balls. So I left. Day 86. Finally caught Astagon. Day 87. Caught Valet. Tried to catch Marcus. It didn't work. Day 88. Caught Marcus. Wanted to have a few levels. And wanted to craft a new shield. Needed to farm polymer and quartz. For new assembly line. Day 89. Crafted assembly line 2. Made a new cook station and hyper shield. Made pizza and power leveled by taming alpha pals. Day 90. Went out and tamed some new pals to get more XP. Tamed a few Yormatide Ignis and a Wombo Botan. Went to Snow Biome. Caught a Sibilix. 
and died to cold. Day 91. Farm pallets for oil. Made electric furnace. Crafted myself pal armor. I was a mega tank now and could easily fight Zoe and Lily. I felt so powerful. I was practically a demigod. Day 92. Tried to fight dude and Orzerk again. Didn't do enough DPS. Made a shotgun. Sold all of my trophies. Made a lot of money. Day 93. Bought a lot of shells. Tried to tame my stallion. Didn't work. Power leveled new pals. Day 94. Went back to fight Frostallion again. The little fellow was really annoying and ran through my entire team and ate all of my legendary spears. It's such BS, man. Day 95. I tried to fight Frostallion again. I really need to rethink my strategy. I might need to use a glider. Day 96. Still, after this Frostallion, the glider sucks. So bad compared to the Gale Claw. Oh my god, man. I would have had it if the glider didn't suck so bad. Day 97. Still at it.mp4. Day 98. Made a lot of prep to fight Frostallion again. Was going in with a lot of grenades. Day 99. Said F it. Built a pal box next to the Frostallion and just threw all my pals at it. Died a few times, but we got the Frostallion. Day 100. I bred Frostallion knocked and leveled up. Made Astagon a saddle. Wanted to make Relaxasaurus a saddle too. And thus concludes my 100 days in Power World. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. This might be my last 100 days video. We shall see. Sorry to leave on such a sour note. This is Glam, signing off.